So, um, it, it, you know, I think by the time I got there, I was prepared for it. The, the tough thing was it was like I was living like four lives in one because, you know, you had to have a, a full time job to make the money. But then I was also in acting classes, which were a couple of days a week. And then you would have, it was a scene study class. So you would have a scene partner that could live in any of the five boroughs. So sometimes you'd be hopping on a subway to go to your scene partner's place in, in, you know, Queens or in Brooklyn or, you know, right there in Manhattan. And that was time. So there was all that. Then there was, I was, you know, working at California Pizza Kitchen during the day. I was bartending at a place called Blackfin and later Turtle Bay Grill and Lounge at night. And it, it was, so it was nuts. It was like I had, I was, I was basically agenting myself because I didn't have an agent yet. So I had to go through backstage and scour for different auditions and stuff. So it mm -hmm. was really, I talked to young actors and I say like, I don't know if I'm tough enough right now to do what I did back then. It was yeah, a lot. What was going on through your head that kept you motivated? I just, I just loved it. I just, I was, I don't know what it, it, it was kind of, I guess what we talked about earlier was I was always searching for something that would require all of me. And this was it. And, and I just, I just all loved of me. Do you mean like being content? Meaning like it would use all of the, the different, uh, skills or, um, aspects of myself. Like I love, as we're having this conversation, I love conversations like this. I yeah. love grappling with someone's, what makes someone tick. And that's what you do with your characters, you know, as, as an actor, you're, you're, you're analyzing a script, you're analyzing your character, you're trying to figure out a new world, so you're using your mind. But you're also, it's not just like you're writing a paper about them, you're physically embodying them and going into it, and I like that. You know, like I said, I always played sports, so I like physically being involved. Um, there's a team aspect to it, you know, which I, all the sports I played were team sports. So it was mm -hmm. like, so there, there's that aspect of like, whether you're putting up a production, or you, you know, a play or you're doing a film, it's, it's the same kind of thing. You're coordinating with other people and yet it relies on your own performance too. Like you've got to perform when, when they say action or, or in a play, when the curtain goes up, there you are you know, for better or for worse, which is similar, again, to sports. You, you know, once the game starts, you're out there, and it's like you're either getting knocked on your ass or, or you're getting back up. And I love, I love that you say that because what's very interesting to me about acting is, like, you got all these cameras on you, and you're, you're given a script. I don't know too much about behind the scenes, I mean. Yeah. Uh, but you're given a script, and you're supposed to deliver. How is that feeling when you first begun? Like, were you very nervous? Like, how did that entire yeah. process feel like you're over here working so many jobs yeah. trying to figure things out getting free gigs left and right right did you ever have moments where you just felt like oh god this is too much oh yeah man i mean i've had moments where you know i, I feel like i have stories for days about like you know good and bad times when i was like in my in my instinct and i really let it go and i probably was so dumb and naive that it actually worked to my advantage <laughs> I, I, honestly, honestly place, huh? totally yeah. totally and then there are other times where you know you just uh, swing and miss and uh and there are other times when you're just incredibly nervous um i mean you're just making me think of the first one of the first tv gigs i had uh was law and order and it was and i was playing it was like not not much of a role and and like I remember getting there, it was like downtown at the the courthouse, somewhere near the courthouse, and I was so green that I didn't even realize what we were doing. What I ended up getting really nervous about was a rehearsal. It was like a a camera rehearsal, mm -hmm. um, and I was like B -b 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 heart palpitating. And and you have like your sides, you know, you have the scene, and I yeah. didn't really have that much to do. And we're kind of going around, and it got to me. I just remember really being nervous and like. And then they were like, okay, uh, let's go back. You know, we'll be back and, you know, we're going to light it and we're going to shoot it. And I was like, oh, like I was that green that I did. I was like, oh, I'm getting all nervous for this. It's a rehearsal. Yeah. I, it was just, it's, it's, it's kind of unbelievable when I think back now how little I knew, you know. Um, sometimes that serves you and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but, so what would, what would Matthew today tell Matthew when you first started? I, I would I would say um, 
you know, if you, if you're really enjoying it, you know, and you do need to, you have to keep checking in with yourself to see that you're really still inspired and you, you don't want to be hanging on to something that because you said you were going to do it, you have to really want to do it. But, but if that's the case, you just keep taking one step after the other and you, you will get better. You will learn more. You will meet people that will help you along the way that that's kind of the, the premise of my whole podcast, mm-hmm. I mean, 10,000 knows. That's well, what we'll it get is. into that. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, that's, that, that's what I would say to people is like, if you, if you really want it, you know, you, you can, you can get what, whatever you want. If you, if you're a combination of, you know, um, resilient, you gotta be resilient. You gotta, you gotta have perseverance. It's, it's what I said to you about setting this whole thing up. Mm-hmm. You were just, you, you came after it and you, you made it easy for me to say yes. There mm-hmm. were many times when we were about to set this up and I was like, ah, I'm yeah, busy. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. What. And you made it easy for me. You, you just, you, you kind of in a respectful way kept on pushing. And I that's what I would that. say. You. That would be, yeah, no, that would be my advice to people that are young and getting into it. It's like, you, you have to have like there's a certain hard-headedness that you have to have. It's a st- certain stupidity. In a it, it, it is. You it know, is, it's yes, like it you, you need to, because it's like delusional. It's like and no matter what, this is going to happen. Like, yeah, it's, you know? it's in a way it's delusional because you're basically, you have this vision of something you want and it doesn't exist. And the world is telling you you're nuts that like, what are you talking about? You're not going to do, you're not going to be on TV. You're not going to do that. Yeah. And it's like, well, how, why would you do that? And you're just basically saying like, okay, yep, that's great. And pushing that aside and moving forward. And on the other hand, there, there has to be a, a sensitivity to what's working and what's not and, and who the smart people are that are, uh, in your field that are where you want to go and, and learning from them and realizing you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You have to, you have to get help, but you have to get help from the right people. Cause I, I see a lot of people in, in my industry in particular, they're, they're young and they're naive and they just get hoodwinked by someone who, you know, I don't know, claims to have answers. And they're like, they're just, it's, it's sad to see mm-hmm. people can play on people's, desires in this business i think you know they can they, they can play on their naivete and they and they can really it's 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 uh you're selling them a dream yeah in a sense and people will willingly go if they really want something they're willing to follow people and sometimes they're following the wrong people down the wrong path and you're like oh so how are you able to kind of filter the wrong from the right out Huh. Or did you just get lucky? Like, is there even such thing as luck in this industry kind of thing? Uh, I mean, I, th- I think there is. I mean, I don't believe be, in luck. I think you it's could like... be fortunate, but I, I really believe in that old, the old saying about like, you know, luck is preparation meeting hard opportunity. Work, yeah. Preparation yeah. meets opportunity. There's plenty. Of, everybody's going to get their shot where the wheel's going to come around for them. Are you ready for it?